Hey guys, what's happening? So, got another 3D printer in, and it's pretty gnarly. It's a, uh, it's actually a huge printer. I don't know if you can even see the the reference to scale of this thing, but it's actually a uh, base on a Verone 2.4. So it's like a fully completed Verone 2.4. Uh, usually when you buy a Verone, it's it's actually a kit or you print out a kit. So, yeah, this is actually was an expensive printer. It's was uh, $2,000 and uh, yeah I mean this is an insanely nice printer though like professional cable chains has an orbiter hot end on it you know it has the 4Z motors on it 400 by 400 um, but what I'm actually what I'm doing on this uh, board is I'm going to be changing this over from a rep wrap uh, duet clone based uh, hardware to uh, Marlin let me show you that real fast I mean, do you look at just, I mean, just the printer bed alone. Look how thick that piece of aluminum is. I mean, this thing is super, super high quality. The issue with this board is it's a uh, Duet kind of knockoff clone board that runs wrap wrap. But the issue is the drivers. So I'm getting step and direction from the actual software and to the actual uh, the driver. These are I think they're Tridynamic 22660s. And uh, I mean, even actually shows it on the screen when I have it connected. I mean, the software and everything thinks that it's commanded to move, like when, in a homing cycle. But I'm not getting any output on the on the steppers or on the drivers to control the steppers. So it's almost like a dead. I get zero movement. And the guy has been trying to get support, you know, from the from the company. And he actually has multiple control boards that they actually sent him. But I think the problem is actually the drivers. It, it's weird because they're all burnt out. I'm not sure. Um, because I'm not, I'm not getting any sort of like a motor output. Even, so when I hook up my multimeters to these things, I don't get any motor output. So I'm going to convert this over to a octopus. So a big tree tech octopus. This actually came with a kit. Uh, it came with a 3.5 inch touch screen. All right, two boxes of Trinamic 2209 version 1.2s. So eight of those, two boxes of four. And the usual rubber ducky with Victory Tech. Uh, cool, USB C. Finally, I'm glad they're changing that over because I can't say I'm micro USB. Too weak. Um, all right, here is the board. So it's going to be replacing this board right here. Well, I wonder if they, uh, well, I'll probably have to change all these to the standoffs, but. Well, they're pretty close, so I'm probably going to have to re-drill the holes for standoffs. Um, but I'm going to try to keep it in the same location where the drivers are down here. Um, yeah, obviously this is going to be, I can actually either run Marlin with this or, or a Clipper. I mean, Clipper is, well, I'm going to try doing Marlin first, and if I can't get it to go in Marlin, then I'll go to Clipper. Um, Alright, so we're going to add a pull this out, and with everything sucks, I'm going to have to... We terminate all these cables to GAST, which is standard for most Marlin boards. Um, so I, I do have a kit, so I'm going to have to recramp all these all these connectors. Fans, uh, this also has a BL touch down here. So I'm going to have to figure that out too. Um, like how it's terminated. Is it going to like a servo pin or is it going to like a, a the Z stop plus a 5 volt? Got to figure that out. Yeah, this one originally had Wi-Fi, so actually I might actually tell them to get the Wi-Fi module. So, and that is just a looks like a USB. Actually, that feeds it back, so we might have to update that too. Um, all right, so I don't think I've seen a. I mean, most of the drones I've seen online are, are probably based on Clipper. So um, this will be interesting to try to get in Marlin. I mean, I know it can support it. It just mainly it's the, the steps, how fast these things can actually pulse. Um, it's like even like the same thing with like a CNC board, you know. Your maximum driver speed will be how fast your board can pulse. Send pulses to the drivers, you know. But uh, yeah, because you're driving four Z's, you know, and you have a, a Y and X. All right. So first things first, I'm gonna see if this board actually works. I'm gonna pull this board out. And uh, I'm going to try to maybe label these. Well, I guess I can just tone them out again. but Because I don't really know. I mean, they do kind of say on the board what they are. So I might get some masking tape and put, put what they are on there. 
yeah, this board originally had integrated Wi-Fi, so, um, yeah, he is going to want to probably uh, send prints via Wi-Fi. I mean, I prefer OctaPrint, so, um, I mean, the cool thing about this, this chassis is there's a lot of room to put stuff down below. Um, yeah, look at this. So it's cool thing is I'm not going to be working in a cramped spot, which is nice. So, i got to figure out these standoffs. Yeah, so here's a close look at the board. Um, so, it's called a TrueDun version 1 right there. But these drivers are proprietary. So most of the Duet boards actually have the drivers built on, soldered right on the PCB. But, uh, yeah, even just to replace these things are kind of expensive, and you can't get them locally. You have to get them from China, so... Um, yeah, it's weird. I wasn't getting any sort of, like, motor output. But the firmware was commanding it. I could see it. I was doing commands, uh, you know, G1, G0. Nothing. So, no, no output. Alright, so here is the so, Octopus board. It's actually the first time I've ever seen an Octopus before. But it actually has four outputs, four MOSFETs for output right here. Um, four hot ends. You could do, like, a quad. So, back in the day, they used to come with, a, like, a 128 megabit, megabyte, um, SD card. But yeah, lots of options. So, eight drivers. So, um, I need to orient this in a way that's going to fit all these wires. Hmm. But then the drivers from the other side. I, mean, I can fit it. I, I just want to make sure I get adequate cooling because the fan is over here. I'm going to have to redo all these standoffs, but. Right, I gotta figure out the best solution for this thing. I might even design a fan duct to go straight on the actual uh, the, the coolers that mount here. You know, just something that gives it some uh, direct cooling. Now I'll look online. Maybe, maybe somebody's already come up with one on Thingiverse. I right, got the board mounted. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna use the original stock fan, but I'm gonna have to create some kind of duct system here. Um, the doesn't say on the PCB what. Each of those is. I'm going to look in the manual. And there's a manual in the box, so I'm going to download the PDF. So I got to hook up the main power, and the this is actually a solid state relay. It's actually an AC control bed. So just basically the hot bed output activates the, uh, the solid state relay. I'm going to get this thing with the power. One thing I did notice though is the polarity was the opposite from the power supply than it was for the, uh, what's it called? The brown was on the negative. I'm not sure. Well, the opposite from the solid state relay, the positive and negative, the color codes. I'm going to fire this up. I'm not going to hook any drivers up in case this thing pops. Alright. Cool. Alright, so i got to set the jumpers for Trinamic 2209s uh, in UART mode. And then uh, when you're in UART mode, you can control the uh, motor current via the uh, LCD. Or just via the modeling command line. Alright, so to put this thing up in New York mode, I gotta get rid of these. I gotta get rid of three of the jumpers. It's gonna be hard to grab. Alright, so if you're not familiar with the 2209s, they can be either run in standalone or UART mode. So if they're in standalone mode, you'd actually address the current on this trimming pot right here. But because I'm in UART mode, I can control via serial via Marlin. And right, so if you ever put a heat stick on, um, see the thin side and the thick side? Well, depending on the direction of the air, you want the thin side, you want the airflow going through the thin side. You'll get better airflow and better cooling. Alright, so one thing I noticed about this is that it actually had a separate input for bed power. So I don't know if that's using this for um, you know, an extra input. So I don't know if that's going to work or not. I guess we'll see. Um, that and this right here is motor input, power input. So I don't know if I need to have this connected to drive these motors or not. It's not really clear in the manual, but I mean, I'll find out once I try to sort of drive the motors here. Uh, I do actually have the Wi-Fi module on order. That's coming in. All right, now comes the fun part. I got to retrain all these cables to JST. So in my case, I need to redo everything to JST. So these pits are cheap, like $10 on Amazon. But you only get this good set of crimpers though. Well, out of the box, the TFTP works. I mean, there's enough firmware on there where I can actually control. I mean, there's a basic firmware. I'm not sure what the firmware is, but that's heating up. Okay, stop. Um, I should probably get that off. <laughs> AC. Yeah, let's see if I can do the uh, bed here. Yeah, 
normally if this actually is working I would normally get there would be some kind of LED on the well I guess it all depends on the I guess it all depends on the MOSFET there should be an LED that goes on so this is where it factors in having the actual extra power coming into the bed which kind of sucks because it's being controlled by AC yeah, that's a tiny MOSFET too you can't control a really big bed with that MOSFET so heat a bed so yeah, those are the four hot ends right there, and that's the that's the bed MOSFET. Alright guys, so hopefully this video helps somebody that's doing this in Marlin. So, if you have the octopus, um, see these two, one and two? Well, these are mirrored. You don't want to actually want to have a mirrored port because you want to be able to control them independently for bed leveling. Um, so you're going to have to skip this 2.2. So, um, in Marlin, I'm running uh, 2.1. Um, it, if you actually define four axis, like just to like where you define the steppers, like the TMC 2209 portion of the uh, configuration, um, it will automatically pick up and arrange this. So this is basically X, Y, uh, Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4. So this will be extruder. So the extruder will be on motor four. Uh, motor three is stepper uh, two. So I hope you can see that in the video right over here. So I'll do that again. Z or X, Y, Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, and the extruder will be right there, motor four. I can't believe I'm at this point. This is hours and hours and hours. Getting the motor directions correct, you know, reversed. I had to flip the wires in this one. I couldn't because it was a Z3 and Z4. I couldn't figure out what to do in firmware just to, to flip them in software in the firmware so I just reversed the wires at the actual motors um, you know four and two and four one in each direction here so um, all right, this is my first G28 here there is actually a BL touch on there you just can't see it it's under the probe so we will see if it works this is the first G28 successful G28 coming down with the BL touch uh, Motion, auto home. So, my, when I got this printer, it was already partially disassembled, so I didn't really see how it came together. So, I'm assuming there's probably spacers that brings the bed up, so I just put some wood on there. Alright, XYZ. Yell touch came down. So, it should bounce and come back up and check again, typically, normally in Marlin. Alright, so that makes me think that the we're not getting a a Z. We're not getting a probe signal back, so I gotta check the end stops M one eighteen command. So I feel like the BL touch is not setting back a that it hit the end stop. So I gotta I gotta make sure I gotta check in Marlin and see if it's actually defined as the actual servo pin, which it should be, but alright. Guys, I'm doing the first print on the uh, Verone 2.4 or Vibe Dino, what they call the Trudone. Uh, so the, actually, the bed you can see it's still sitting on plywood, so it's not even even. But I, I actually made the uh, gantry even with the uneven bed, so it's pretty close. Um, I just wanted to make sure it worked. Um, print it out before I actually because it's getting hard to get to the electronics. Like once I get the bed tightened down, so. Want to make sure everything worked electrically.